and his co-hosts Matt and Derek and we have an announcement to make as you can see based on our screen Alex Debrinka is officially a Detroit Red Wing sends Ooh, look at that deal too boys Let's freaking go, boys. Come on. This is great stuff right here. Oh, my God. A 2024 conditional first, a fourth-round pick, Dominic Kubelik and Donovan Sabrango. What a fleece. Oh, my God. Boys, let me hear from you. Come on. From my couch. Uh, I mean, first that comes first, who is Donovan Sabrango? I'm not going to lie. I was happier than heck when I saw that name because I had no idea who he was. I was like, perfect. Toss him in the mix. We're going to get that off with a trade and a conditional first at four years. I was hoping for a six. Only yeah, a Matt, six. And they got me a four to five. Yeah, Matt, break down that uh, condition for us real quick, like you said. All right. So basically, I want to give the guy credit who said it. Um, I believe it was Max Boltman, but... I can't find it right now on my profile. But anyways, um, the condition is basically, so the Red Wings have two first-round picks. They have their first-round pick next year, and they have Boston's. They can choose which one they want to send to Ottawa. So basically, if the Bruins make the Cup Finals and they win the Stanley Cup next year, we can send them pick 32 instead of whatever the Red Wings pick is going to be. So, I mean... You talk about this is a fleece. When you throw that in there, this is even more of a fleece. I mean, how does Dorian even agree to this thing? I kind of feel like he's just done being a GM and he didn't want to have a job anymore. And this is him just kind of quiet quitting and just being like, we got a new owner. I'm probably one foot out the door anyways. Let me just go ahead and fucking seppuku myself and just help out the new guy who's coming in. But yeah, this is insane. Like, this trade right here. So just to break it down, like, we've got Dominic, Dominic Kubelik, who... Wasn't even going to be on contract past this year. He's literally up for a contract. Donovan Sobrango, who he was a, a defenseman picked a few years ago by Iserman, didn't really have a future with the team because there's so many guys in the way of him, and he wasn't really all that impressive anyways. I really feel like the main piece here is the first-round pick, which we can choose which one we want to send. So, yeah, um, if you guys listen to that, do you guys hear that? Uh, that's the sound of Pierre Dorian getting fired right now because this is a horrible trade for him to make. Um, but yeah, but more so with the trade, it's a great trade. And the fact that we only have him for four years, and if we like what we see after year four, we can re-sign him again. I mean, this is just a masterpiece right here. I don't even really have any other words for this. This is, I, I was really curious what I would see. It, it kind of felt like it was going to be a long-term extension just with how long it was taking for him to get it signed. The fact that it's only four years is absolutely mind-blowing. I never would have thought in my wildest dreams it would be that short. So, and... so, so a new tweet just came out saying that his contract, based on value, so for 2023, it's 8.25 until 26, and then 26, 27, it costs $6.75 million. All salary, no signing bonus, four years, $31.5 million dollars. Starting July 1st, 2024, 16 team, no trade list. And as you can see, his annual average uh, value is 7.875. We got him under what Dylan Larkin makes, and we got him under $8 million. Holy mother of God. Steve Eiserman, you're a freaking wizard, my dude. Oh my God. Let's go. We all hail the Jesus Christ. And the fact is, I did not want to talk crap to all the Senator fans out there, but none of Be them nice. are going to say a single word you right can now. now. Because Be they, nice. Let's what, be what nice. Are they do? Oh, my God. I'm, I'm actually sorry for you Senator fans out there. I'll say that to you. Everything you hoped and dreamed got crushed, and the Red Wings took full advantage of you guys, and I love it. I don't know why your GM well, doesn't like you right now that much, but woo! Pierre Dorian definitely did not do a solid. But let's go ahead and look at the Red Wings roster now. The Red Wings still have over eight million dollars that they could utilize. Like they, if they really wanted to, they still could go out and get more players. Not that we really need anymore. We literally just got our goal scorer for the next four years. Like this is nuts. 
look at this. Okay, so as you can see on Cap Friendly, I'm not sure if it's actually popped up yet, but it looks like that it did take away our pick yeah, so it. far on the condition, like Matt said. It could be either one of those picks. Um, so this is phenomenal. This is amazing. Let me let me scroll down on this too. Oh my god, boys. I, I mean, am let's just be honest. Game. Let's hope Boston blows up again next year, has another sixty two game season and wins the Stanley Cup, and we can throw a thirty second pick at them for this, and we are good to go. I mean, I I don't know what's gonna happen with Boston, but Boston's pick is top ten protected as well. So no matter what, Senators pretty much just kinda F themselves in this regard because if the Red Wings somehow do decent you know, like, then you just give them that pick. If it's pick 15, 16, whatever it is, you know. But you just kind of hope that Boston is a little bit better. Like, you don't expect them to be bad this year. Now we basically have to root for Boston to be good this year is pretty much what I'm getting from it. Am I understanding that correctly or no? Uh, you basically. guys can root for that. I despise that team, so I won't. But you guys can do that. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm just so excited, dude. Like I said, I am shaking. I am recording from my freaking couch. These boys can attest that I was blowing up the group chat. I was like, it's freaking happening. Come on, get on your freaking computers. We got to record right now. <laughs> oh, my I God. Mean, I tried to do it from my phone, and we realized how bad that was going. So I literally got up and went to the other apartment that I have, apparently, kind of, not really, to record in well, my nice little studio. <laughs> Maybe we should I just got to say... I'm watching my aunt's house for this entire week. Thank God I decided to bring my recording equi equipment because I did not know when we'd be recording. Little did I know it was tonight with probably one of the biggest. Is it fair to say this is one of the bigger trades of the rebuild? Would yes, you Would you well, think that's fair to say? I mean, with this well, trade, so. like. It's you would the say so? One. It's the biggest yeah. one. That biggest so far. Yeah. I mean, this gives us like, I mean. You know, we had we had a pretty decent top line last year, but this is like this is one of the better top lines now. With you got your young star Raymond, you got Larkin, who of course we know and love him, um, and you got Debrinket. I I feel like with um, Larkin's playmaking skills, Debrinket's easily going to get back to that thirty forty goal form, easily. I mean, Larkin's one of the best players he could be playing with to get his numbers up. So this is this is a tremendous trade for us. I absolutely love it. So top line is uh, to bring Cat, Mark, and Raymond. Easy, done. You just leave that. That. That's. I mean, oh. that's what I would do. I guess we'll see how it shakes out in camp, but that seems pretty logical to me. I don't see how else you can go any way about it. And then, like for my roster, if we want to look back at my roster, our our video that we recorded this morning is now just being aired because it took so long to process based on the edits that I had to make. But, um, yeah, so disregard that whole entire video. You could slap Alex DeBrincat right in there and, you know, Michael Rasmussen for me on my, on my uh, opening night roster, I'm bumping him down to the second line. Anyone who's on the left side, you're getting bumped down. Um, yeah, there's no more group leak. So, yeah, I, this is – I mean, poor Kubu leak. I mean, we're going to kind of miss him. But, like, we didn't give up Joe Valeno. We didn't like we gave up Donovan Sabrino. Like it was just going to be hard for him to crack the lineup. I mean, he was a good left-handed D prospect for us. I mean, a lot of people seem to have had high hopes for him, but had fun in Ottawa Suns. Have fun. I'm sorry. I, I love you, but I uh, hope Mama Sabrino uh, enjoys the fact that now he's going to be in Canada. So <laughs> um, this is amazing, though. Like I am just, shook it. I am shook it, honestly. I mean, people were doubting the Yeiser plan, and now we see exactly what he was doing with all this time being stingy. It worked out for yeah. us, guys. It really did. Like, holy crap. Look at those numbers. Look at the years. Look at the lineup that we have now, because my first line is now not changed too much, except for the fact that Kubelik got kicked out, and now Debrink gets in there. Hmm. Yeah. I will take it. So, I mean, I don't know how much further you guys really want to go into this episode. I mean, if we can make this, like, a really short one, and then, I guess, the next time we record, we just kind of delve even deeper. We might just have to re-record the episode that we just posted, pretty much, and just, like, then we can do our power play units, we can do our TK units, do whatever we want now. Because at this point, like, I really don't see anything else that Iserman's going to do. But, yeah, the Iser, Iser plan, Iserman was staying patient. He stuck, he stood firm, and... 
did what he had to do. And, you know, this is just police all the way, in my personal opinion. I mean, all those Ottawa Suns fans, I'm sorry, but for you guys to say that you guys had leverage, this is not the type of leverage that you guys were probably thinking of. This is your, like, you just literally just handed us a 30 to 40 goal score for a first round pick that's probably going to be from pick 17 to 32. Like, this is just insane. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you to- brought that up because you really talk about how much of a, of a fleece this is. If you compare it to the trade they made to the Blackhawks for it, they gave up, I think it was pick seven and like 32 or something. And yes. this first round pick next year, it won't be seven. It probably won't even be 10. It'll be probably in the middle or maybe even later because we're coming, baby. We're coming for that ass. We're coming for the playoffs. But right. um So is that is that is that the expectation now is that we make playoffs? Like is that actually an expectation well, or are we still kind of hoping that we make it? I mean, that's the hope. I think it's more likely we make it now than we don't, but I'm not gonna say I expect it or it'll be a disappointing season. But it gets us really, really close, man. <laughs> Um, of course, you still got to go out there and compete against everyone in your division. You got you got to win the games you're you're matched up against. But this this little injection of scoring. I mean, we just talked about it earlier on this on the episode we did this morning. The Red Wings were the one of the worst goal scoring teams in the entire league, and Eiserman saw that and said, "You know what? Let me go out and add a former forty goal scorer to this roster, and we see how it looks next year." So I really feel like this team is going to bounce back. They they for sure will finish higher than they did this year. I'm yes. I'm gonna guarantee that they're not finishing seventh this year. I really feel like this team they could sneak into a wild card. I really feel like they could. They're not there yet to get a divisional seed. They're still a little few years away, but I don't see any reason why in like the last year of Debrinket's contract we're not in a divisional seed. I mean we have so many good prospects that we're gonna add to this lineup. We we're we're really set up to win in the future with this move now, this is a great move and this is kind of just the start of our little playoff run i feel Th- this is now, really putting the pieces in place and then we'll see how it goes from here yeah and even next year looking at next year we still have 33 million dollars so if you're worried about lucas raymond getting paid you're worried about most ever getting paid have no fear steve eisenman is here look at that number 33 million dollars at your disposal you got your top line score you got your number one center you're going to get paid for your number one defenseman. You're going to get paid paying another uh, – uh, oh, my God, I can't even speak – a right-wing shooting goal scorer like in Lucas Raymond. And then you still have Jonathan Berger. And a lot of people thought that Jonathan Berger was going to go. Everyone was correct when they said it was going to be Dominic Kubli. This is just magnificent. <laughs> oh, my God. <gasps> Boys, it's a great thing to see that we – went from being iffy for playoffs, being being iffy for the season to being a playoff contender now. And not saying we're going to make it to the playoffs, but we are a contender. We we jumped yes. up in the last what was it, 10 hours since we recorded? We jumped up quite a bit from what we were thinking already. <laughs> Just with one yes. player getting added to the top line, which is the goal scorer oh, that we needed, aka for Leslie. <laughs> Leslie, you, you Leslie, spoke it, man. You're the one who brought it here today, bro. <laughs> I would just like to give a shout out to my boy Nick Demchuk. Uh, we were talking about him on the lake signing, and um, now we're going to be able to play some roller hockey with him with the JCC. So shout out to you. I hope you're listening. I don't think you are, but I did tell you to listen. So please do listen to the podcast. But yeah, this is a phenomenal move. Um, also, the first thing that Debrinket needs to do when he gets back to his hometown of Farmington Hills is okay. go hit up Tomatoes of Pizza. Uh, you can call me up. I'll buy you a pizza. You can choose any topping that you want. That stuff is absolutely delicious. Maybe I'll throw in some, like, Nutella sticks. Those are absolutely bomb. But, yeah, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to see him in Detroit. I think he is such a good fit in Detroit. He's, like, pretty much the exact player that I would have wanted on the top line with Larkin. This is this is phenomenal. I think it's still kind of soaking in for me. It's not really totally set in yet. I'll probably wake up tomorrow morning and just like start cheering and I'll freak the fuck out of my aunt's cat. So be like, what the hell is going on? But yeah, I'm I'm very ex- I'm very excited about this. Um, yeah. You know, after free agency, it it is what it is. I was kind of skeptical about this next year, but with this move, 
I'm very excited. I am very, very excited. And probably right after we finish this recording, I'm going to hang up and start looking into some Red Wings tickets. Maybe yeah, the game against I, Ottawa. So yeah, I'm, let's do I'm, it, boys. I'm not really sure what else we could really go and talk about. So why don't we just kind of end it here and then – We'll kind of collect our thoughts for a couple of days and then we'll try to figure out our next uh, best day for recording. How's that sound, boys? Does anyone have any final thoughts on this other than let's effing go? Let's go! Let's go, Red Wings boys. Holy shit. We did a move and I liked the move and that move was probably the best one of all free agency. Good job, Stevie. Go, Red Wings. Let's keep it fucking going there, bud. Oh. That's cool. All right. Thanks yeah, for my, no, my final thoughts are, do you guys remember when this trade was going to start with Raymond or Berggren, and now neither one of them are in the trade? Yeah, suck on that, Sense fans. You guys are literally living on cloud nine. Like, I don't even know what else to say. You're probably lo- losing brain cells inhaling that force fire smoke up there. But I, I don't know what the hell is going on up there in Ottawa, but have fun with Kubelik for one more year, I guess, and then you'll probably... Sign him like a ten million dollar deal because Peter Dorkian is just that bad at his job. So, yeah, we'll we'll take Elk to bring it off your hands. He'll play in a city that he actually wants to be in, and he didn't, you know, get traded here against his own will. But I'm very excited. I think Red Wings fans around the world and in Detroit they should be very excited. This team is all of a sudden overnight looking much much better. So let's go Red Wings. All right, boys, let's go ahead and close it off. Thank you for joining us on this mini episode that we just did. So, uh, look for us in, uh, in a couple days for a new episode about the lineups. Yeah, upside maybe, down. Yeah, maybe we'll play some future bets while we're uh, recording. So, uh, all right, everyone, we'll see you all on the next episode. Go Red Wings. Let's go.